Today we've been talking about emissions reduction in farming systems and the role of soil carbon. Look, I think the first thing that people need to do when they're looking at emissions reduction on their farm is actually to know what their emissions are. So the first thing to do is, is to do an audit uh, that is so you can verify sort of what emissions you do have. Uh, and then that helps you decide what opportunities you have in the future uh, to either sell carbon or whether you will need it to offset your emissions into the future, which is what most operations will have to do. Look, the first priority for anyone in this space is to look at emissions avoidance options. So that's where you're uh, avoiding an emission uh, in your production system. So that's things like uh, turning your stock off earlier, feeding supplements that uh, reduce uh, methane emissions, uh, those sorts of things. Because once you've avoided an emission, then you don't have to worry about it into the future. Look, with soil carbon, uh, it's, it's a way of uh, offsetting emissions. So what that means is we're storing so carbon in the soil to offset emissions that you're pr have, uh, producing in your production system. Uh, the thing I want to mention is you really need to look for opportunities where this will occur. So it's where you've got low soil carbon levels to begin with. Um, if soil carbon levels are high, there's less capacity to store. Um, and then if you look at soil carbon, look at things that there's ev scientific evidence to support um, the, the building of soil carbon. So those things are things like converting cropland to pasture um, and uh, building nutrients and productivity in, in pastures. They're things that, that there is evidence that it, soil carbon is stored. Taking some soil tests to see what your soil carbon is in your zero to ten, so the, the soil tests that you'd norm, you use for your, your normal um, planning, and then just look at those compared to what you might expect to the level to be for a that soil type, which is largely driven by the, the clay percentage in the soil and rainfall environment, and then that'll help tell you whether there's capacity to store carbon there or not, and then whether soil carbon's a viable option. I always love interacting with producers, hearing their stories about what they're doing on farms, hearing about what they're thinking about. Um, it really helps us as, as people doing research in this area to better understand the problems and how it affects people.